Bonjour à tous. Hello to everybody. We are back from the Democratic Republic of Congo and are here to give a little update about what's going on uh, there. We returned two weeks ago, just as the airplanes and, airplanes and the airports and the countries were closing. Um, at Vanga at the time, um, people were just becoming aware of the coronavirus. They were just hearing about all of these things in the news. And um, we had already planned to come home at this time. And we, our schedule was bumped up a little bit because of the situation with the flights. So we left a little bit brusquely. But before we left, we were able to begin the process of um, preparing the hospital in Vanga to um, be ready for coronavirus. <clears throat> um, the hospital at Vanga has a certain amount of preparedness because Ebola has been known, is known in Congo. And so we have a certain amount of PPE we've been supplying and trying to get ready for that eventuality, never anticipating that a virus such as coronavirus would be what was needed. Um, so we had a meeting with our colleagues, the leaders of the hospital, and began reviewing um, together what we could do to prevent coronavirus. The problem in Vanga is, and really probably much of Africa and other developing areas, is there is no um, treatment for coronavirus. There's not even the supportive care um, such as ventilators. There are no ventilators in Vanga at our hospital. Um, there's a little bit of oxygen that we can use if needed, but other than that, there's nothing particularly um, specific to coronavirus that we can provide. And so we really, really have to be um, preventing the spread because once it spreads, um, there's just not much to do. So we are talking, we were talking about, you know, increasing our hand washing stations in using the masks appropriately, um, limiting the number of, of um, people who come into the hospital and um, trying to release patients as soon as possible uh, so that there's both space and uh, less risk of contamination. For my part, I am the director of the nursing school. And um, at the time that I left, um, nothing had changed. But within a week, the, the government has shut down all universities. And so our nursing school has been closed now. The students have been sent home to rest in isolation with their families. Um, so there's not much happening at this point, although, on this side, I continue to be your missionary by um, downloading articles that we can have on the computers in our um, nursing school library. We do not have internet connection, so things I can, articles that I can bring on flash disk and put on the um, computers that keeps our library more up to date. Um, also, I am a preschool teacher, and we had already planned and to close out while I was gone, but that continues. What doesn't continue, or d what doesn't um, stop, is that we are always recruiting for Vanga. We need um, kindergarten teacher, we need medical people, we need support staff in terms of um, accounting and computer maintenance and maintenance in general and all of that. So lots of things don't stop even though we're not there in person. And Tim can tell you how he is working with the hospital leadership to manage the coronavirus. So I usually like to start talking about the hospital by actually starting uh, at the church. Uh, the work of the church, the work of Christians is really central to what we're doing at the hospital. Um, this is a, a picture, I think uh, you should be able to see it, where um, we had a group of people um, visiting us uh, from the United States as well as uh, uh, a fistula surgeon from uh, Kinshasa. From Kinshasa. Um, we have instituted a, a process of no entry, uh, no mask, no entry of the hospital. And so this is difficult because of the limited resources. And um, as Kathy mentioned, we do have a very limited amount of uh, ability to provide care, uh, oxygen concentrator, um, 
we have a few oxygen concentrators. These, this equipment costs a thousand dollars and needs a uh, 24 hour electricity. Fortunately, we've had, um, we recently, as of last October, had installed a large battery, which then does allow us to provide 24 hour electricity. Um, So this is a, a screenshot of uh, the hospital. It's a 400 bed hospital, single story, goats in the courtyard. Um, and then we also have, um, you know, some uh, nice shots here of inside where we're, uh, pa patients are drying their clothes out uh, on the grass. Um, we, Wanted to end this video with a brief discussion about uh, Psalms 91. Psalms 91 talks about, um, you know, God's goodness, that he is a shelter, that he is, uh, we can rest in his shadow. He's a refuge. He's a fortress. Um, he's a shield. He's a, a buckler. He is our dwelling, our permanent place that we get to be. He's our rescuer and our protection. Um, and these, these pass this passage applies to us as we um, work through being back in the United States and uh, doing my hospital time at Cardinal Glennon, as well as um, to our brothers and sisters as we pray uh, for them and continue to send resources and support them. And, and these apply in these following three ways. Uh, um, we know that God's kingdom um, is... Uh, already um, here, but yet uh, there are many broken things that are still not fixed, and we get to be a part of that. Um, and as uh, we know uh, from Peter's experience walking on the water, that it is important that we keep our eyes and our focus of our faith on God and his goodness and not on the storm and the chaos and the difficulties of serving God um, in dangerous situations, whether it's uh, COVID-19 or whether it's Ebola or whether it's just tuberculosis or other malaria or other things that we are and our, our colleagues are exposed to and at risk for there in Bonga. And the final um, message is that God's great plan always uses pain and suffering to complete his plan. And, and that, that suffering included uh, Jesus' death on the cross, and it inc includes us being willing to step out in faith um, and trust him as we show his love and as we look for ways of being practical hands and feet. Um, and we trust God that, that even... Um, um, as we walk forward, uh, we know uh, that God will provide our needs and the resources needed. Um, we certainly are aware of the, the rising unemployment here in the United States, but we, we know that um, people are generously continuing to support us, and we do thank you for that, um, and uh, standing with us in prayer as well as we love and serve um, uh, in Congo.